Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Overly Honest Movie Reviews. My name is Chris, and as always, I try to give you guys what you want to see. Please like this video, then subscribe and follow me for more content like this. I cover anything and everything related to movies, both old and new. I feel like after about a month, I finally kicked COVID outside of some fatigue and leftover mild cough. With that, I can finally get back to giving you guys the content you want. I'll probably start posting on Wednesdays and Fridays to start with, and then eventually get back to my Monday videos as well. In this video, I'm going to talk about something that's plagued me for as long as I've been going to movie theaters. I could make 10 videos of the worst PG-13 horror films ever, and even then, I don't think I'd cover them all. It seems like every streaming platform are pumping them out regularly. What I want to do is visit my top 10 that are worth it especially since the theater-going experience won't be ruined by laughs and giggles throughout. I do have to say that unfortunately this is based on American ratings. I'm sure some of these would vary greatly in other countries, some being higher rated, some being lower. I've always found ratings to be pretty fluid, especially considering different countries have such a wide range. Starting my list number 10, I'm going to say The Monster Squad. You know who to call when you have ghosts. But who do you call when you have monsters? We're the Monster Squad. What's a squad? It's like my own advice, I think. They're young and inexperienced. Naughty virgin! They're a bit disorganized. Monsters are not real. We don't know that, sir. 2,000-year-old dead guys do not get up and walk away by themselves! But when strange things start happening in town... There's a monster in my closet. Whoa! Look at that thing! Bullet? They're the only ones ready to do battle. So he's out there to kill him, people. And if it's monsters, nobody's gonna do a thing about it but us. So the first two entries are kind of borderline horror. This is a 1987 horror fantasy that's a personal favorite of mine. This is for no other reason than it being nostalgic. If I were to watch it today with fresh eyes, I probably doubt I'd have as much love for it as I do. Number nine is also borderline horror. Gremlins 2, The New Batch. They're mutating. <laughs> Sir, is the building on fire? No, no, that's a false alarm. <laughs> Are you trying to panic New York City? Absolutely not. <laughs> so the monsters are real? I didn't say that. <laughs> When Gremlins was released, it was only PG. Something magic was in the air when they decided to give the sequel a PG-13 rating, though. There was nothing about either of the films that I didn't love, and I'm terrified that there's talks of a third that keep popping up. Coming in number eight, Stay Alive. Stay Alive? Never heard of it. Yeah, this could be nice. Sweet Sebastian Bach, I want to play. Miller, you signed in yet? I'm here. All right, let's boot it up. Damn it, man, she got me. Some, some, some woman, man. Miller died the same way he died in the game. This can't just be a coincidence. I think you're right. I'm serious, man, listen to yourself. Don't you get it? If you die in the game, you die for real. Okay, so I know as many people hated this as they did like it. For me, there was something special. It came out right when I was really big into video games, and that idea was just so much fun. Not to mention Maria Kalinanas role as Countess Elizabeth Bathroy, better known as the Blood Countess. This was based on a real-life woman who tortured and killed hundreds of young girls and women between 1590 and 1610, so much so that she holds the Guinness World Record for the most prolific female murderer. We won't talk about Frankie Muniz and what this did to his career. Coming in number seven is 1408. Gerald Olin, manager of the Dolphin. If I can just get the key to 1408. In the 95 years of the hotel's existence, there have been 56 deaths in 1408. 56. No one's ever lasted more than an hour. The first victims to Kevin O'Malley. Cut his own throat. Do not stay in that room. Nobody lasts more than an hour. <laughs> 
based on Stephen King's short story by the same title, it just captured something special in my imagination, starring John Cusack, which I really don't know what happened to John Cusack, and Samuel L. Jackson. The film follows Mike Enslin and his investigation into room 1408 at the Dolphin, a hotel on Lexington Avenue in New York. The fun really begins from there. I love that he has become such a skeptic in his line of work by investigating haunted houses that it takes something special to really get to him. With number six, I've got What Lies Beneath. Just us now. Noises. I, I didn't want to noises disturb were? you, but at the house, I was scared. Claire's hearing things. What are you hearing? Voices whispering. A picture fell. Missing girl. Do you remember this? No. I stopped at this cafe to get a coffee, and I see Norman, but he wasn't alone. Look at this. Doesn't that look exactly like a face and there's a hand, see? Someone who's very close to me seems to be in contact with some kind of entity or, or spirit. There's a ghost in my house. Any idea what she wants? She said... What do you get when you combine Michelle Pfeiffer and Harrison Ford? A surprisingly good thriller with some horror elements. The twist in this film gives it so much more power, nearly on the same level as the infamous I See Dead People. While the film itself received mixed reviews, the star power was undeniable. It had a special feeling to it while watching it. I think that I could only compare it to Misery in terms of the actual psychological aspects. And number five, I have Cloverfield. Robert Hawkins. Approximately seven hours ago, uh, something attacked the city. Um, you found this. If you're watching this, then you know more about it than I do. Hello? Beth? Beth, where are you? Okay, we cannot go into the middle of the city. We gotta get out of here. There's nothing you can do for now. You know what that thing is? Whatever it is, it's winning. Do you have any idea what's out there? I don't care what's out there. Listen to me. She's dying. Turn the camera. This is such an odd franchise. I know that it was intentional, but I still don't understand it. I guess there's actually a sequel to the original film that's now in the works. I don't understand how that's going to work, but I'll still end up seeing it. As much as I love mystery, I would love to get some of the loose ends of this, and I say this lightly, series wrapped up. Coming in at number four is The Ring. Have you heard about this videotape that kills you when you watch it? You start to play it, and it's like somebody's nightmare. And as soon as it's over, your phone rings. And what they say is, you will die in seven days. Katie told you she was going to die. She told me. She said she didn't have enough time. Would you say that I'm gullible? No. Easily rattled? A little highly strung, maybe. I watched the tape. What can I say about this film that hasn't been said a thousand times before? I really don't think that it should have continued beyond the original, but that doesn't change the fact that I love this. I haven't watched it in a long time, so I don't know how it's aged. Hopefully like a fine wine, even though I really don't like wine, but you get the point. Coming in at number three, a newer edition, A Quiet Place.
a more recent success with a PG-13 rating, a film that was meant for the theater experience. The atmosphere while watching this was something special. It really shows what the power of sound and dialogue or the lack thereof can have on a film. A scream that'll be stuck in my head forever. Although there were a lot of lapses in logic, I absolutely hated seeing the monster. I mean, come on, it would have been so much more powerful if we never saw this Stranger Things ripoff. And number two, I have Insidious. Yeah. He's not in a coma. They don't know what to call it. Arguably one of the biggest guns in horror in the last 10 years or so, and it was PG-13. Reading the synopsis now makes it sound a little silly. A family looks to prevent evil spirits from trapping their comatose children in a realm called the Further. However, James Wan was able to make this something special and unforgettable, especially with the whole modern horror icon Patrick Wilson starring in the lead. So before I wrap this list up, I'm going to do two honorable mentions. The first of which is Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Turns out you have been chosen, Buffy. To do what? To stop the vampires. Does Elvis talk to you? When things started getting weird around here. Are we having a nightmare? You threw a knife at my head. And you caught it. She was the one person I could really count on. Kill him a lot. Hi. Hi. Aging here. What am I doing here? I'm saving your butt. That is a bad guy. Can we go, please? The Slayer is unmasked. Let's finish it. I think this relationship has potential. Hi. How's it going? You're obviously having a bad hair day. If she can just get rid of those other guys in her life. Stab him in the heart. So I'm not talking about the beloved TV series, even if recent allegations against the creator have tarnished a bit. I'm talking about the movie that started it all, starring Kristen Swans, Christy Swanson, sorry, Donald Sutherland, Paul Rubens, Hilary Swank, and the late Luke Perry. This was the perfect movie for 1992. It had a camp to it that just made it perfect in every way. Some one-liners that scream the 90s, and enough cliche moments that would put Clueless on check. My second honorable mention is Killer Clowns from Outer Space. You either love it or you hate it. There's no in-betweens. If you disagree, I would love to hear from you, although I'd have to see a sworn testimony because I've never heard otherwise. It was a night like any other night. Then something happened. Something different. It's no shooting star. Why here? Why now? Why clowns? <laughs> They've been knocking them dead all over the universe. What are you going to do? Knock my block off. <laughs> Soon they'll be doing it at a theater near you. Killer clowns from outer space. In this 1988 film, it is quite literally everything you'd think it is. A race of aliens that look like monster clowns come and terrorize this town and its carnival. If you're going to watch this, just know that it was everything the 80s was, and it was well aware of it. How it's PG-13 is beyond me, because it still gives me nightmares. Coming in at number one is Drag Me to Hell. We have an elderly woman asking for an extension on her mortgage payment. We would have to throw her out of her house. We've already granted her two extensions. It's a tough decision. Your call. 
but another extension is out of the question. Where will I live? I'm really sorry. Never have I begged for anything. But now, I Mrs. humble myself Mrs. before Ganesh, you. Please. I beg you. Please let go. Please let go. Security! Soon it will be you who comes begging to me. Now I know this will be a little touchy with some people, but personally I think it's one of my all-time favorite horror films, outside of the scene in the garage, which, whatever. I can't say enough great things about it. Somehow it only has a 6.2 on IMDb and a 62% audience score on Rotten Tomatoes. I can only think that's maybe because this was too much for some fans, they didn't fully understand the depths. I, I don't know. It... To me, it's a favorite. Sam Raimi returns to his horror franchise after his Spider-Man trilogy. This was really special because of the way he made you feel like you were part of the film. You were suffering from the same anxiety that the lead did. Any of these films listed, at least in my opinion, are great examples, varying from family-friendly to the complete opposite end of the spectrum. With that, I ask you, what would you add or remove? Are there any that I really miss that should be in the top 10? What other honorable mentions would you add? Thank you again for joining me. Please comment below and let me know what your thoughts are. Don't forget to like this video, then subscribe and follow me if you'd like to see more videos like this.